Today on Cross Defense, I sit down with T. Russell Hunter, the founder of Abolitionist Rising, to learn more about what an abortion abolitionist is and why there's a distinction to be made between them and proponents of the big pro-life approach of fighting for the unborn. Let's get into all of that right now on Cross Defense. Welcome to Cross Defense, my friends. This is the show that aims to equip the mind, that aims to excite the imagination, and aims to comfort the soul and aims to do all of it with God's Word. I'm your host, Reverend Tyrell Bramwell. I'm the pastor of St. Mark Lutheran Church out here in Ferndale, California, where get this, get this, my friends, as repentant sinners, we think mothers murdering their babies is not only sinful, but also criminal. Yeah, true story. True story. If during the course of this show you want to send in your comments, your questions, or your bits of biblical brilliance, you can do so by going to tyrellbramwell.com slash contact. That's T-Y-R-E-L B-R-A-M-W-E-L-L dot com slash contact. I think that's how you spell my name. That's where you'd go to find a contact page to message me. You can also find me on YouTube, as I'm pretty sure you know by now, and also Instagram, and maybe perhaps uh, in the near future Facebook again. I think I'm getting pulled back in to all these social platforms, but only as a tool to spread the word of God and I know St. Mark is all about that as well, as is KFUO.org, where Christ is for you anytime, anywhere. And in 2024, we hope to get that out to you more, Jesus out to you more and in more ways. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll suffer for your sake. If you'd like to reach out to those platforms, you can do so. Friends, today's show is a unique one in the sense of it's, it's going to be a complete interview. The entire show is an interview. In the course of doing some research for this episode, which I wanted to be about abortion, the abortion issue, because we are coming up on Sanctity of Life Sunday. I think by the time this airs, it will be uh, that week. So I uh, wanted to talk about this and make sure you know not to sit down and relax. You may think that Roe v. Wade was overturned, and so therefore the abortion fight is over. It's a moot point. No. All the overturning of Roe v. Wade did was send the fight back to the state level where it's supposed to be happening or where it was happening before. And so you, my friends, are still engaged in this battle to save the lives of the innocent children being murdered by their mommies. And we don't want to let up. We want to keep that fire burning. We want to keep that fight going in service to our neighbors. And as I was doing this homework, I came across abolitionists rising And the Lord worked it out so that my calendar and the the calendar of the founder that actually aligned and we could sit down and have a conversation just kind of impromptu. So without any delay, here is my conversation with T. Russell Hunter of Abolitionists Rising. T. Russell Hunter, could you please, for the sake of my audience and for my own sake, let us know who you are and uh, who you're with and some of your background information. I'm excited to have you on the show. Thanks for carving out some time. First you know, first and foremost, thanks for making some time at such a short notice. Uh, neither of us knew we were going to do this yeah. interview, and we made it work, so thank you for that. It's especially important um, this time of year as people are, are very much att- attuned to the, uh, the, the Roe v. Wade life abortion mm-hmm. issue, right? It, it obviously comes onto our radar in January. It should be on our radar every single day, but... It obviously comes back right. around every January, but uh, tell us, who are you, brother? Yeah, well, I'm just a, I'm a follower of Christ. I live in Norman, Oklahoma, uh, you know, got uh, four, four little kids here on earth with my wife and uh, two, two, two children that we've lost in miscarriage wow. up there with Christ. They're my really well-behaved kids. And uh, <laughs> my wife hates it when I tell that joke, but I mean, I, I just know it's true. Um, but but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just... I'm just a just a just a guy living here in Norman, Oklahoma. A very uh, red, conservative, pro-life state that shut down all of its abortion clinics. That still mass orders abortion pills and still is guilty of you know practicing modern child sacrifice um, under the cover of law without any justice for preborn children. So I'm an abolitionist of abortion, um, basically full-time trying to do whatever I can to sort of wake up fellow believers and engage the culture of death and get people involved in seeing and understanding abortion as murder, 
um, in attempting to get both the practice of the people and the laws of our states and our nation, and I guess beyond that, um, to be in line with you know the idea of human beings having the right to life and uh, and uh, no no human being no group of humans having special uh, murder rights. So, yeah, I'm an abolitionist of abortion. I work with Abolitionist Rising. We are relatively new. I've been an abolitionist for about ten years. Okay, doing doing abolitionist work and well i'm sure we'll get into that more what what distinguishes abolitionist work but abolitionist rising is uh we are very focused on going out into the culture engaging people on the streets because we believe that abortion is a it is a cultural uh issue it is is happening in the culture um it's not just happening at the abortion clinics like people are making decisions about whether they're going to keep or terminate their children all around us. Um, and so, you know, seeing that and looking at that about 10 years ago, I decided, you know, what does it look like to be a Christian in a culture that practices child sacrifice? You know, how do I rescue children being taken away to death? How do I love my preborn neighbor as myself? Got convicted, said, you know what, I'm just going to try to apply the golden rule to the preborn human being and uh, kind of led me into this work and uh, been doing it ever since. And, you know, fortunate that I'm able to do it um, in a way that, you know, I don't have other things that I do. So I work on materials for the abolition of abortion uh, movement, um, run a YouTube channel and all that kind of kind of stuff. Well, I, I very <laughs> recently discovered your work and I got to say, I appreciate all of it. It's high quality and it's, it's genuine and, and um, the, the integrity there, it, watching your shorts, watching your YouTube videos, seeing your engagement with people who are heckling and disagreeing and just coming at, at you with these attacks and these disagreements and your patience, your long suffering as a Christian witness mm. is commendable. So thank you for the work you're yeah. doing. I really appreciate it. I know from several encounters on my in my own ministry here, uh, some of the things that I've encountered, that it's very difficult at first, especially to to even have the courage to step up and do it live and in person. Yeah. And a lot of Christians, they want to back away from that because it's so intimidating to think about, well, what will I say? Or how will I say it? And you just, I know you did, you didn't, yeah. you weren't born with a perfected way of doing this. You had to develop it and it's really <laughs> well done. So thank you. Let, yeah. Actually, can I talk about that well, for a second? You. I saw your logo and um, this, this Phoenix, I'm going to look here at the computer as I'm talking, but this, yeah. this, this Phoenix, obviously with a, Abolitionist rising makes sense just from a t title, but tell us, yeah. why'd you hone in on this Phoenix? I love that you have the snake with, it says child sacrifice yeah. on it. And it's above the scripture with, uh, you know, learn, learn to do good, seek justice. It's Isaiah one, oh, yes. uh, there we go. 16 and 17. Yeah, so talk so to it's me about uh, this imagery. This is awesome. Yeah. Some people don't like the imagery you get, you get, you get, you occasionally you'll run into some, I don't know. I don't want to, there's like this sort of like uh, fundamentalist hatred of like using imagery that somebody somewhere else could use for bad. So some people don't like it, but it is a Phoenix and the Phoenix is being used there as a symbol of, you know, rising, uh, you know, rising from something previous that has sort of died, you know, and that's come back to life. And so uh, a lot of, a lot of the distinction between like pro-life and abolitionism is kind of like snuck in there uh the, okay. I, there's been a there's been a movement against abortion in the united states of america for 50 years and for you know so for five decades there have been people who've been opposed to abortion but over those five decades a lot of stuff has developed up within that movement sort of a preference for incrementalism as the policy focus over sort of abolitionism a preference for regulating abortion over and above abolishing abortion, a preference for abortions, bad, choose life, but we're not going to make it a criminal act sort of things that have grown up in the pro-life movement. And also sort of, a, um, you know, I don't mean to be offensive, but sort of like a ashamed of the gospel sort of thing going on in the pro-life movement, sort of like a let's re leave religion out. Let's not bring up that God stuff. Let's leave Jesus out of this thing. Let's just try to save babies. And so the abolitionist movement, which is newer and has kind of come on the scene, has said, hey, we're going to be 
unabashedly gospel centered in this thing. We're going to call abortion sin. We're going to say it's murder, but then we're going to say we know a God who forgives murderers. We're going to, we're going to say, you know, God hates, hates the hands that shed innocent blood, but he also redeems people who shed innocent blood. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do justice and mercy at the same time. And we're not going to leave God out of it. And so we're going to be very upfront. We're doing this because we follow Christ. We're doing this uh, because we, you know, believe that the word of God is very clear on what ought to be done about child sacrifice. Like if you, you could do, you could do big evils, but like scripture is very specific about like child sacrifice, like nations or states or communities or people that kill their children. God has a very clear, uh, um, you know, message for them, you know, woe to them and all that. And then he has a very clear message through the prophets all the way through the apostles about what he thinks about, you know, fatherless children. So that the Phoenix is rising there from the word of God. Um, the shape of the Phoenix, actually, it's the little hidden Easter egg. It's actually based on the Eagle. That is the Wilberforce family crest. So, yeah, so it's, it's the Wilberforce family Eagle that has been adapted because a lot of the ideas that were ferreted out by earlier abolitionists, such as a preference for abolition over regulation was something that Wilberforce learned that he was putting forward bills of abolition. And instead of abolition, they're always like, well, instead of abolishing it, why don't we just give the slaves more space preference for regulation over abolition instead of voting for the bill to abolish the slave trade, they voted for a bill to abolish it in 20 years. And so that sort of distinction between abolitionism and uh, regulationism is kind of symbolized in that as well. Um, and of course, the very on the nose clear, the snake says child sacrifice. Yeah. The, the, the phoenix is ripping, try, uh, attempting to rip the, the snake in half. Um, abolitionists, we believe that we can criminalize abortion. We can abolish it. We may not be able to like, I mean, people are going to be murdering their children, um, you know, until, you know, <laughs> until Christ returns, until right? This is like, returns, we're, absolutely. yeah, we're, we're not going to perfect all people everywhere, uh, before the return of Christ, but we can get our laws right. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so we're trying to do our best to deal with this, this child sacrifice thing, um, get it, get it under wraps, um. And, and uh, one thing that's it's not in the symbol there, it's not in that, but it's something that needs to be stated, is that we do not believe that you need to sort of divorce the focus on good law from the focus on like uh, good practice. Like you can practice pure and undefiled religion, help orphans and widows. You can go out into the street and share the gospel with people. You can tell them, yeah, I do believe this is murder. It should be a criminal act but I'm not the state. I'm not here to punish you. I am here to tell you the good news of Jesus Christ. And you can do all, you don't have to major in one or the other. You don't have to split these things up. You can, you can practice assistance and agitation at the same time. This is a situation Uh, where it's not an either, or it is a, it is a both. And you can do both of these. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you to to help us clarify? I know some of my listeners out there in the cross defense world are, are going to be thinking up to this very moment, they were thinking, well, you know, I'm pro-life. This is a, I, I exist in a binary where the opposite is pro-abortion. Right and now here's already, you've <laughs> kind of hinted at it. If they weren't aware of it, they're kind of scratching their heads going, wait, what's an abolitionist? Where, where do they fit into this? So can you kind of break apart a little bit that binary and, and really where the abolitionist movement is something yeah. different and something unique, but also fighting for, that similar cause because many people, you know, the LCMS listeners are definitely going, yeah, we're pro-life. We've always been pro-life. We're, we're for yeah. pro-life. Um, but yeah, just kind of meet that. And out they might even for us, they might even be thinking, well, what this guy's saying, isn't that just pro-life Isn't that what we believe as right. pro-lifers? Yeah. Um, well, the, the issue is, is that most normal, regular Christians that are pro-life probably do agree with the idea that abortion is murder and that it should be abolished. Yeah. When you kind of go up the uh, organizational charts into the pro-life lobbying world, it's abortion is killing. It's not murder. It should 
be done away with and made unthinkable, but not abolished. If by abolished, you mean criminalized, you mean the law. So, so there is, and it's not something we've made up that's arbitrary. Like it's not like some tribal distinction thing, the pro-life movement in response to the growth of the abolition movement, you've had, we've had bills of abolition go forward in, you know, 15 states or so. And whenever the bill of abolition got out of committee and onto the um, house floor in Louisiana, the pro-life movement all came together and said, we oppose this bill. And they wrote a letter. They got 72 of the leading pro-life organizations from Susan B. Anthony list, National Right to Life on down to tell the legislators in Louisiana, do not pass this bill to criminalize abortion in your state because we don't believe that the mother should ever possibly ever be brought up on charges like you shouldn't be able to pass a law saying abortion is murder it should be treated like a murder if it doesn't include blanket immunity for mothers now abolitionists aren't going after the mother we're going after whoever whoever the principal cause in the abortion is is the person who's guilty of the the homicide but um but the pro-life movement has fixated on the abolitionist movement's uh belief that not only should we say abortion is murder, but it should be treated as murder. You know, yeah. um, the pro-life movement, someone's like, no, I'm pro-life. I believe that. Well, the problem is, is when the pro-life movement gets together, all of their smart fe- people and they write a letter, they oppose the idea of treating abortion as though it is the same thing as like murdering a toddler. They've got a different category. Now, some of that is probably theological in nature that comes okay. from some kind of uh catholic distinction between like certain kinds of you know sins i Mortal i believe and all that kind of thing yeah yeah but a lot of it is is cultural and it's based on this belief that the culture just isn't ready for something like admitting that one in four mothers have murdered their children well, the culture definitely won't be ready for it if those who are supposed to be advocating for the end of abortion are are keep, yeah. keeping it going. Uh, yeah, because the pro-life, like when I say I live in Oklahoma, uh, we've had a bill of abolition put forward to criminalize abortion as murder since 2016. And since 2016, pro-life Republicans have been majorities, super majorities in the Senate, the House and the governor's office. So if pro-life and abolition are truly the same thing, why has an abortion been abolished in Oklahoma? Wow. Well, it's because the pro-lifers have every year killed that bill. Every time the bill is put forward, they've used their power because it's, it's, it's the pro-life leadership is the pro-life governor It's like, send me a pro-life bill, not an abolition bill. I'll sign wow. that. Wow. And so a lot of this distinction is getting out. Um, it's certainly getting out there a lot. It's making headway in, in a number of um, probably pockets more than other pockets. Sure. Um, it's become it's become a regular uh, debate um, in the sort of Southern Baptist Convention. So the Southern Baptists actually haven't, you know, if you were to talk to Southern Baptist leaders, they would say they have an abolitionist problem that whenever they meet for their convention. And they're the lar- I think they're the largest denomination in the, the nation. And when they meet, <laughs> <laughs> what's that? An abolitionist problem. Wow. An abolitionist problem. Yeah, because, because the number of normal, regular, like Southern Baptist pastors who advocate for abolitionism has rot- risen to the level where they put it forward as like, this should be the position of our, den- of our, um, whatever they call it, you know, denomination. Yeah, yeah their church body. Should, but, oh, yeah. 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 That should be, you know, and I go to Southern Baptist Church, so I guess I should say we, but like <laughs> that, this should be the, this should be the position. It's because I'm in Oklahoma. I have no other choice. No. Um, <laughs> hey, but I can it, find it, a Lutheran it, church if you're interested. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Just send me a list. <laughs> um, but the, but the thing is, is that the president of like the SBC sees abolitionism as a threat because the president of the SBC is actually connected to all that pro-life movement organizational structure. 
So is this a, so, a big, like we talk about big pharma, big oil, big tobacco, is this a big pro-life? Is that what we're talking big about? Big pro-life. Yeah. Some people that are more on the abolitionist side, they'll say pro-life industry or pro-life establishment. I tend to just say pro-life movement because even though most normal pro-life people may have no problem with the abolitionist views, the pro-life industry, the pro-life leaders, they do tend to speak for tens of millions of pro-lifers. So they'll say, like, if you look on the National Right to Life website uh, coming up March for Life, you know, they'll say uh, that they speak for tens of millions of pro-life Americans and that no pro-life American supports the idea of criminal prosecutions for people who break a law to murder their babies. So they they speak for the movement. I think the industry... So. It, and most normal pro-life people that you talk to that might say, I have no problem with abolitionism. But then if you really dig into it, there are things that are not yet clear. Like sure. abolitionists, we, we, for instance, uh, because of the verse that you're talking about there on, on the logo, uh, Isaiah, 1, 6, uh, Isaiah 1, 17 says, you know, um, establish justice for the fatherless. And then in Isaiah 10, 1 through 2, it says, Woe to those who make iniquitous decrees that make the fatherless pray. So, like, it's very clear that God doesn't like it when we write laws that distinctly, like, make fatherless children the prey of oppression. Mm -hmm. And so, don't write those kinds of laws. Well, pro lifers have historically written hundreds, well, thousands of laws which actually include an exception to explicitly allow children to be punished to death for the crimes of their fathers. So the fatherless child conceived in rape in a pro-life law is being sold out for like this greater good because, you know, they're just 1% or something like that. There's 10,000. I, I noticed so. on your website that, you know, as you break down the differences and, and there's an em emphasis on non-compromising, right? Like not compromising yeah. with truth. And I really yeah. appreciated that, especially when you start the example that I think I saw there was something about a, a, a bill that was put forward that would, they would outlaw abortion, you know, down to 20, 20 weeks or something. And it's like, yeah, that's a great win, except for if right. you're, <laughs> except for if you're under the 20 week, weeks, then you're murdered. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it's, which is like this I whole, totally like, uh, and I love that. that yeah. We, and then the crazy thing is, is all those, uh, sort of like, how about 20 weeks? How about 15 weeks? How about 12 weeks? Most abortions happen between six and nine weeks. So those bills that are put forward as these like, well, we're saving as many as we can. One, they're being put forward and passed by legislatures that could pass total abolition from conception. So they're passing that bill instead of. Oh. So it's, they're not, they have the vote. All of the people who vote for the 20 week fetal pain bill say they want to do more. It, then why not do more? It's like they're choosing to go step by step and all, all of the proposed ideas, like the, the 20 week bans, the 15 week bans by and large leave abortion completely legal. They just basically say you need to make your choice more quickly. And I'm sorry, but 15 weeks is a long time. You know, <laughs> like most, most, most babies that are aborted, you know, are six to eight weeks, right? Some, somewhere in there, maybe nine weeks, depending on where you start counting. Yeah. But like the, the, the propositions to compromise, to get a little bit, it's kind of like you're playing chess with the devil. And he's like, well, I'll let you take a few pieces off the board as long as I can continue to put you in checkmate, which is legalized child sacrifice. And so even in states like Oklahoma, where we don't, there's not a freestanding abortion clinic anywhere in our state. I mean, maybe it's covert or something, but there's no, there's no working abortionist who's, who's you can go to for an abortion. You just get on Google and you order the pill and you could go down to the district. You could go to the um, attorney general of the state of Oklahoma, or you could stand outside of the governor's office and you could pop a pill that you bought and they send it to you from Texas or India or wherever we I've ordered them and got them from India. I've ordered them. I've got them from Texas and Texas also doesn't have abortion, but you can take this pill in front of the attorney general and murder a baby in your womb up to 12 weeks. And on our, from our governing authorities, they will say, you will not be prosecuted for this. You are actually a victim of abortion. So 
I know that's a lot, but from the compromise with allowing fatherless children conceived in rape to be killed, the compromise with like valuing children who have the ability to feel pain to children who have beating hearts, abolitionists are just like, they're just image bearers. Like let's, let's get beyond the ability to feel pain, the possession of a beating heart, looking cute. Like let's just do image bearers, yeah. human beings. Like, like when the son of God entered the world to redeem it, he did it via conception of the Holy Spirit. And he began as a human embryo and he developed in all the ways that we did, yep. um, you know, from that moment. And uh, let's just protect all the humans that Jesus ever was, which is all of them. And let's, uh, you know, be consistent on that ground. Uh, they don't have to be cute little babies. They don't have to have blood. They don't have beating hearts, all that kind of stuff. When abolitionists focus on that, they're basically told, stop, stop trying to go for the whole thing. You're not going to get it. Like you got to compromise. You got to compromise. And the pro-lifers may sound worldly wise there, but the problem is, is when you look at what they've been doing and compromising, they've got 50 years of legalized child sacrifice, 75 million murdered children. And even after they accomplish the, the major goal of repealing Roe v. Wade, you still have a million abortions every year in this country because the culture has has been consistently told abortion is, uh, you know, maybe bad. You should choose life. Abortion is not Republican, but they, the culture hasn't been being told abortion is murder. It's child sacrifice. God hates it. We shouldn't do it. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's been mixed messaging. Um, and if you do do it, you should do it before they feel pain or before they have a beating heart, you know, and all this, all this kind of stuff. The abolitionist is like, no, it's murder before God and it's not safe. We should not be doing this. So on your website, you show that that distinction between, uh, abolitionists and pro-life movement. You have a nice, real, real clean imagery there with bullet points. Abolitionists are gospel-centered, providential, yeah. church-driven, biblical, uncompromising. And then as the, the you know, opposite of that is pro-life movement is secular, worldly-wise, as you've said, lobbyist-driven and compromising. This yeah. to me is, is very interesting. Are, do, are there abolitionists who are not Christian? I mean... Well, the... the there, uh, they all. There are some that always want to be. You know, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, if you if you look at like abolitionist rising videos, some of our True. videos, you know, and uh, I'll I'll look at the comments, and I will notice there is a group of there's like atheists out there, for instance, that are like, hey, you know what? I'm an atheist. I realize this channel is very forward in its Christian preaching and teaching and views. But I, I agree, abortions, murder, it should be abolished. And it's kind of like, well, you, 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 you're, you're, you got the right thought here. Your, your yeah. mind is working. Your morals are working. You know, you're made in the image of God, and that's still functioning. You seem to be tapped into the right moral law here. Uh, as an atheist, you have no foundation for it whatsoever. Right. But I, I'm glad you support, like, the truth of reality. They're the Athenians um, groping in the dark for the God who's right there, right? And he, they just yeah, yeah. Not quite, I mean, and, not and, quite they, and they do their exist. finger on it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to make them. Right. I don't think that. For instance, I don't think if you didn't have the reveal word of God and you didn't have Christians who were truly, you know, uh, you know, abiding in Christ and have the Holy Spirit and all that kind of stuff, if you if you didn't have them, you would never have abolitionism. I think abolitionism comes from that, but it is true and so you always have even if you're talking about earlier evils if you talk about the abolition of chattel slavery in america the abolitionists were a bunch of hardcore christians like the leadership they were very serious about okay. um christ and they're very serious about um you know his teachings and following his commandments and all that kind of stuff and that's what led to the abolitionist movement but you did have all these other people heretics of various stripes and sure even some Atheism wasn't really that much around, but you had some naturalists, some materialists, and some non-believers that were like, yeah, I'm on the side of abolition. But they weren't running the movement. I don't think that would ever, I don't think that would ever give birth to an abolitionist movement. Sure. But, uh, but there are certainly non-believers who support the they're, ideology. They're seeing the logical consistency of it. They're seeing it, yes, these people are standing for what they say is right. Like, yes, this is murder. 
so if it's murder, yeah. this is the conclusion, outlaw it and have there be penalties yeah. for it rather than this is yeah. murder, except that we want to be squishy. Yeah. Right? If yeah. humans have rights, the abolitionists who say humans ontologically as humans have rights, we're going to say that we're just going to like adopt that as the social compact or whatever. The moment of conception is scientifically when a human being begins right there after fertilization, you have this new human being. We've all been there. We all start there. We all go through the same sort of development. And we're saying if you're going to have rights for humans based on humanness, not some arbitrary like personhood that's attached because of some kind of uh, list of attributes that you have or your utility or something like that. Yeah, you, you have, I think, a logical necessity. Like it, 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 you're not going to get any kind of position that makes consistent sense that's like pro-abortion and I believe in human rights. Right. You know, you got to violate human rights to have abortion unless you create some squishy sort of, you know, humans aren't valuable until they're persons, which is right. kind of what we did in this country. Your, your um, stance on the non-compromise, it seems to be not just in word and not just in what you written and oral, what, what you present on the street when you're doing ministry out there trying to reach people, but also what you, you know, put out, you confess on your statement on your website, but also in your imagery, mm -hmm. in the signs, you can see a distinction between what we have become accustomed to in the pro-life movement, generally right. speaking, with, with a very, uh, the words are true, but they're very, uh, they're definitely softer than what Calculated. we see yeah what, what we see with your signs could you speak to that and and there, like I, I watched one of your videos uh, i think it might be even the one that's sort of as your home video when you when you land on your channel and, and mm -hmm. you're, you're speaking with some young gals uh probably college age students and they're talking about your use of a of a sign that directly connects abortion to the slave trade yeah. that we all recognize as evil uh and definitely with with the the black americans and you use the you know the the N word that people don't like to use. And you, you use what was yeah. said then in that day to show that that was evil. And this is, too yeah, evil. and they will like, come this up. Is not the way to go about it. Speak to that. <laughs> would you speak to the, the you know, yeah. in, in, in the Lutheran world, the confessional Lutheran world, pr our primary audience here on cross defense, uh, we have mm -hmm. a custom and, and we have to honestly be, be repentant of this. We used to be much better at calling a spade a spade. And this is how the reformation got started with like, This is, right. this is not gospel. This is law. We want to return to Jesus, right? That kind of thing. So we call a spade a spade. Yeah. And I see, as I look at the abolitionist materials that you can find at abolitionistrising.com.org.com. Uh, com. I think com. if you go, okay. I think either of them will go yeah. to the right place, but okay. yeah, so com. The, the materials you guys are putting out is much more in keeping with calling a spade a spade. Than what we yeah. see with the softer, gentler pro-life messages. The, the anyway, speak to that. Would you yeah. please? Yeah, I mean, I think we we try to be as harsh as truth and as uncompromising as justice. And and so there's a there's a there's a tendency which uh, w you can forget that we're talking about child sacrifice if you are always softening. Like, what are we literally talking about? We're talking about in in many you know, like burning children alive you know like suffocating children smashing them ripping them up into pieces we're talking about you know poisoning them you know yeah. we're making the one place they're able to live inhospitable to where they end up you know in the urine you know i mean it's it is a brutal wicked dehumanizing and destructive thing um the the desire to sort of try to like meet people in some kind of like uh compassionate space to talk about abortion in, in any other kind of terms is, is I think an error that has been built up over the past 50 years and one that we're trying to, uh, to change. Um, but yes, yeah, a spade, a spade. I mean, abortion is murder. A lot of people are like, yeah, it's true, but don't say that. <laughs> don't say that you're going to lose people on that. It was like, oh, because the truth doesn't set people free. Like, what do you want me to do? Amen. Like, um, like I, I tell people the, the truth about it. So I can tell people the, the goodness of God, like the truth is, is that you've murdered a child, but the good news is, is you can put that at the foot of the cross. Like, yeah. like if you're, if you actually are doing the so-called compassionate thing and not calling it murder, cause you don't want anyone to feel like a murderer 
you're actually depriving them of the place that they should go. They should, they should look at themselves and be like, wow, what a wretched person I am. Yeah. The only thing I have is, you know, to cry out to God for mercy. That's a good thing, you know, to get Great people thing. there. Yep. And so, so I think that this whole compassionate, um, soft approach has actually been a very, um, mean thing in our, a very, yeah. I mean, well that said. sounds yeah. kind of childish, but it's a very, no, it mean is very thing. It's been done. mean. Yeah. And then the, and then the other thing that will don't, don't talk about this as though people are like choosing to murder their kids. They're victims. They're victims of our culture. Like play the victim card, like abortion hurts women. You're like, oh, come on. The other side is called the pro choice movement. And they believe that women aren't liberated unless they're able to choose when and when they are not pregnant. And the way they choose it is by having the baby killed and they call it, you know, shouting their abortions. So you got like the pro-life movement, uh, like running around, like women are victims. Don't be harsh. It's like uh, the pro-choice movements shouting their abortions and like taking pills on the steps of the Supreme Court and like running all over the place, like eating cakes, you know, like Miley Cyrus will make a cake about abortion and eat it. Like, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. there's just weird, evil, sick, demonic stuff that's going on, why we would soften that um, is beyond me. But like the messaging, that the one that you talk about, like, you mean, there was, a, there was a time in our culture where there were auction blocks and they would set them up um, and you could sell a man away from his wife and a child away from their mom. And uh, this happened all the time under the cover of law, like sometimes in the, the shadow of steeples. And, uh, it was practiced and it was wicked and it was evil. And most people just looked the other way. Um, well, now you look back on the days of chattel slavery and you're like, oh, I, I wouldn't have been a, I wouldn't have been fine with that. Well, how, or how, okay. Uh, how okay are you with abortion? Yeah. Because that's probably, because you're probably your position towards abortion, your disposition will tell you a lot about what your disposition towards slavery would have been. Because it's not based on the victims. It's not based on the evil. It's based on what the culture thinks. And so you're just kind of going along with the culture. So we like to bring up not, um, we're not, we don't like to just compare abortion and slavery like, oh, these are the same kind of, they're different kinds of evils. There's there's a lot of similarities, and but but they're two distinct kinds of evils. But they the, the way that people argue for chattel slavery is like identical to the way that people argue for abortion. You know, yeah. it's kind of, it's the same sort of, you know, my body, my choice was my plantation, my prerogative. Like Ugh. both of those arguments, they, they discount the fact that there's another human being that's being murdered in one case, uh, you know, dehumanized and destroyed, usually murdered just more slowly in, in chattel slavery. But this sort of my body, my choice thing gets repeated. The, this is legal. It can't be wrong because it's legal. Like you hear that all the time. Like if this were wrong, it wouldn't be legal. Well, that's what you, that's what you have today. <laughs> like just because something's legal doesn't make it right. So we do um, not shy away from that. Um, we all, we, we basically adopt the same ideological foundation as the earlier abolitionists. And so kind of following them, we have adopted some of their rhetoric, uh, some of that approach. So right. that the thing I quoted, I don't want to sound like it's my quote, the harshest truth and as uncompromising as justice is a William Lloyd Garrison okay. quote. And so he was the, he was an abolitionist leader in the 19th century, uh, published the liberator, one of the leading sort of weekly anti slavery journals. And, uh, you know, his thing was like, you tell me to be, you know, more moderate as I'm like rescuing a child from a fire. Or tell me to be a little little more soft when I'm dealing with someone who's raping a woman. Like, no, like we should not be uh, soft when it, you know, are, are being worried about people's feelings whenever we're talking to people who are outright advocating for, you know, burning children to death. You know, we just should not be doing. We we should we should uh, we we hurt ourselves. Yes, and we try to when we try to make it. And nice. that reminds me of an image that's somewhere on your website. I I was trying to quickly look as much as I could as fast as I could to, before the interview since this just popped up for both of us. Um, but I yeah. see a, there was a 
an image of you uh, with a quote about uh, regulating slavery and how it would like perpetuate. It would just be this slow, never ending. Maybe it wasn't yeah. slavery, but it was that idea that came out of the the uh, chattel slavery concept of like instead of just yeah. outlawing it, we'll just continue to give the to bring it into the yeah. life movement. We'll continue to give them a lot of wins, these little minuscule mm-hmm. wins, but we'll keep we'll keep them from the end zone. But as long as they think the chains are moving. Yeah, it's like I think that I think the way I have it on there is like a never ending stream of incremental that's victories. It. That's the like one, so yeah. this this idea like we th- there's always a victory like we can have next like next year's March for Life is planned and we're going to have a victory to celebrate then. And you can just have this never ending stream of victories that are done as substitutes or they're put in the place of the actual win, which is actual justice. And so I that. That does connect to the earlier abolitionists, but it also just connects to like what we've seen. Okay. I mean, if you look at the if if you look at the past fifty years of pro life legislation, it's the defining characteristics have been abortion's bad, but it's not criminal, and so they're all written about like you know uh, who can who can abort babies, where, when, how, what methods. It's never the act of abortion should be done away with, because if you go for the act of abortion. Like one of the things we do is we'll like say, imagine abortion as a tree. The pro lifer is like looking at which branch you can lob off that tree. Like uh, the the kind of an abort, like, you know, you have chemical abortion, surgical abortions, you have all these different kinds of surgical abortions. Let's just get rid of like forceps abortions, abortions that use levers. Let's get rid of that. And they'll pass that bill and they'll celebrate it. And all the pro lifers will be happy. The pro-life money will flow. They'll have the banquets. They'll have the marches. They'll have the victories. And they'll tell the abolitionists, you know, calm down. We're winning. We're, 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 we're getting there. We can't get a touchdown. We get, but we, we got five yards or whatever, you know? And so they just, they do this. And then you look at the language of that forceps bill and you're like, wow, this bill that says you can't kill a baby with forceps explicitly says you can kill a baby same age but you have to use a vacuum aspirator instead you got to suck them into pieces instead of pulling them into pieces right. and and you call the bill a dismemberment bill and then you pass it and in your headlines you say great victory for life it saved nobody but you celebrated it as winning God. and so so that's what i've basically just seen you know i've only been repentant of my own abortion apathy for about 12 years, but I've seen that. I've seen celebrating complete total non-victories that were actually substitutes for justice as these great wins and these people getting up in front of their platform, their people, whoever, and saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And so it's that connection to the, you know, the prophets that, that dealt with this. You always have what God wants you to do justice and mercy walk humbly with god that's what god wants you to do and then you always have these people who stand up and say you know what what we've done is good and god likes what we've what we've done and uh you know we're winning peace peace you know and so yeah that's that's what that quote is supposed to be man that's uh, a, it's a powerful into. One. and thanks for explaining it uh properly sorry i butch, butchered it in the beginning but yeah that's absolutely yeah. true and it's, it seems to be consistent with what we see across the board not just not just uh, in these matters that are that touch the church, but just in general in our in our civil kingdom, our civil realm that we live in in America, we see a lot of the the conservative mindset is has a, been has declined into one mm-hmm. of holding the ground and calling that a victory. But re- in reality, we're losing ground and calling it a victory. We're yeah. we're not actually making wins. And then right. when people step up and try to win. And want to just say no. This I'm chopping down the tree. I'm gonna, yeah. gonna swing the axe at the trunk. You can then go for crazy. the branch. I'm going for the trunk. And then we start turning on ourselves. Like, well, hold on a second, because we see that very that yeah. Pharisaical status quo. The the Sanhedrin kind of mindset of like, don't don't disrupt the apple cart here, guy. Um, right. Rather. Than, oh yeah. What we see now is is a version of that. Of like, don't we need we need you guys to calm down about abortion so we can keep winning these elections. Like being radically against abortion is going to cost us all these elections. And you're like, yeah. 
what's the point in winning these elections if we're not able to do something about the most clear evil in our culture today? Like what? Yeah, I had like, that exact like we, thing told to me by our county supervisor here on an LGBTQ issue a year ago. Mm -hmm. They were trying to pass a hate speech bill against basically my church because we were mm -hmm. speaking loudly. And this guy's supposed to be a conservative. He's our supervisor, our, our district supervisor. And I called him up and said, hey, man, why, why are you voting for this thing? Why are you passing it? And he said, well, you know, you got to understand, Pastor, if we just keep our heads down and be quiet, we won't give them any fuel work to work with. It'll go away. Oh, what yeah. What world have you been living in? Like, that, yeah. that is not how you win. You They've gotten so used to compromise that, that yeah. even when they can win, they like – like say say your your church and just your community was like no we're actually going to stand up against this stuff and be sane uh it, you'll have you'll you'll you won't find it's just the liberal progressive democrats that are emailing you telling you to, to chill out it's going to be it's those establishment people yep. who actually i think i mean i don't want to get too this isn't only political i it just it's sure. in politics is where you see people's hearts often but like the sort of voting for the lesser evil what you it's like you you constantly vote for the lesser evil and if you look at it the lesser evil is always a greater evil over time like every time you vote for a lesser <laughs> evil the establishment yeah. turns around and is like well as long as we're worse like who do we run against this oh we're running against hillary clinton we can pretty much run anyone she's as evil as it gets <laughs> oh hey you know what yeah. biden he's as evil as it gets we can run anyone you know and it's just like then you look at the the person that you have to vote for as the as the lesser evil and you're like 50 years ago yeah the overton window has moved so far over that yeah that the, the yeah, evil is that would have been extreme exactly. evil 50 evil 50 years ago yeah yeah i mean it's like today's republican uh really you point. know shoe in is is like a you know crazy evil leftist you know a yeah. hundred years ago and so it's and a lot of people aren't going to like that but you know I'm sorry. It's your show. Hey, that's all right. A spade is a spade, brother. A spade yeah, is a spade. Yeah, it, it's it's a difficult situation we're in because even people who say these things are going to be like, "But you know, I'm so worried about Marxism." You're like, "Okay, me too." But how are we ever going to change this? Like, <laughs> we, you know, like if we can get like in the whole pro-life abolition space, if you can get enough pro-lifers to become abolitionists to where you can't win an election unless you're an abolitionist. Then we've shifted the Overton window back into like a sane position yeah. towards abortion, but it has been shifted so much. And I think it's been shifted not just by compromise, uh, compromise has allowed it to shift, but the other side is much more like abolitionist in their sort of like immediate desire for evil. Like they, the other side's like, we want abortion on demand for whatever reason. And uh, whenever they came on the scene calling for that, pro-lifers were like, how about abortion in the case of rape and abortion in the case of like when white and black people marry? <laughs> you know, that was like Nixon's position. It was like, let's compromise with abortion as a way of fighting abortion. And the other side was like, no, just, we just want abortion. Um, but the gay marriage thing, you know, you can look at it and th they, they sometimes hide what they want. But when they're out there in the culture, they're just flaunting it. It's just pride and sexual immorality and anyone who disagrees is getting canceled and so you so you've got people who are saying homosexuality is a sin and they're getting canceled then you have people teaching five-year-olds to twerk in front of uh groups of uh homosexual dudes uh and they're not getting canceled and the christians are just kind of like well, you know, freedom of religion, <laughs> you know, uh, freedom of speech. Like, I don't want to like, no, like what? I mean, I'm not an advocate of counseling people, but when you're talking about parading their sin like Sodom and you can't even call it sin without getting canceled, the other side cares more about their destruction of values than the, the right, quote unquote, right side uh, cares about, um, you know, the establishment of truth and yeah, true justice absolutely. and love. So tell me, as we've been talking to uh, so many pro-lifers listening to this program now going, huh, there's something more to this. Where do we go? How do we find out more? What can we do to start exploring yeah. how we can be more abolitionist minded rather than than uh, big, big pro-life yeah. minded? 
Well, there are a number, there are quite a few number of uh, abolitionist organizations that are out there in the culture. And so we have a map on our website, on the abolitionistrising.com website, where you can actually kind of go and you can click your state and you can see, are there any abolitionist organizations in my state? And if they have a website, you can look at their specific website. So you can read, most abolitionists are very wordy, as you can probably tell, and you can read their articles and there's just tons of stuff. Like it's almost just knowing what to search for. The differences between pro-life and abolition, you type that in, you're going to get websites that I've had, a, um, you know, share in making, you're going to get websites that I have no share in making. Uh, there's mul- There's been multiple documentaries now. Um, storm comes rolling down a plane, uh, storm, a storm comes rolling down the plane is a document sort of on the history of the rise of this abolitionist movement. If someone wants to dip into that, a new movie just came out called the abolitionist. I think it's behind a paywall at the moment, but I think it's the abolitionist movie.com. Okay. Um, and these are both of those I had nothing to do with, uh, th- that's other people making them, um, abolitionist rising.com is our website, but our YouTube channel has blown up. It's a very weird thing because essentially the foundation of the channel is people going out and standing like on college campuses or at arts festivals or music festivals with signs that say blatant things like abortion is murder. There's forgiveness for the sin of abortion in Christ alone. Um, and talking to people and just videos of that happening. A lot of the videos, are of me talking to to people and uh it over the course of watching a number of videos i think the distinction between abolitionism and pro-life becomes very clear i think just kind of you kind of pick it up a little bit um but we do have some very explicit sort of pro-life versus abolition debates on there um one is between myself and three student leaders of students for life of America. It's it's on a college campus, but it's just sitting down. These SFLA guys, they go through all the standard pro-life um, opposition views against abolitionism. I try to deal with them there. Um, and we recently did one that I think is, it's very long, but it's pretty instructive. It's a, it's a debate. It's not like a mean debate. We're, we're chill. We treat each other civilly, with, sure. but it's uh, Joel Berry, who's the managing editor of the Babylon Bee, um, yeah. and he's a pro-life uh, incrementalist, and he's debating myself and another abolitionist that that's here in Norman um, about specifically like whether or not it's biblical or cruel or unkind or whatever to criminalize abortion for mothers. And, and it's like a two and a half hour long debate. Wow. Interesting. Um, good stuff. Pr- pretty much 90, 99% of everyone who's watched that debate has become an abolitionist. <laughs> I mean, it sounds really bold. I'm going but, there uh, next. That's great. <laughs> according to the comments, that's, you know, I have to yeah. think Joel Berry, he's converted more people to abolitionism than I ever <laughs> could have dreamed. Excellent. But yeah, sorry, that's a long winded answer. No, that's but- great. We're just about out of time too. So let me do, thank you. T. Russell Hunter with abolitionistrising.com. Thank you for coming on and thank you for all your work you're doing. I really appreciate it. And I hope love to talk to you more in the future and stay connected and learn from you how we can do more of that here in Ferndale and uh, Humboldt County as we're trying to uh, serve our neighbors um, yep. now in those in the womb and and those who could be terminated from the womb, murdered in yeah. the womb. We don't want that to happen. So thank you very I much. So. I really appreciate the the learning opportunity today. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hey man, I love it that you're spreading it. And I just, I always, I try to say every single time I get a chance to say it, uh, be, you know, the whole be doers of the word, not merely hearers, uh, be people who do the work of abolition, who actually do get out there and try to do it. Not everybody has to hold a sign. Not everybody has to do the same exact things, Sure. but, uh, we don't want people, we don't want fans. We don't want people who are like, Oh, I like these abolitionists for doing it. Uh, we just need Christians to simply approach the abortion issue as a love your neighbor issue, yeah. like as a golden rule issue. Love and that. I think Not we fans. will gain it. In, in this culture where we're, everyone's looking for subscribers and uh, likes and follows. No, no, no. Just get yeah. out there and do it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So, All right, brother, are, we're, out of, we're out of time. I got to cut you off. Sorry. We'll have you on again. I love it. And uh, thank you. God's blessing to you there in, in Norman and all of you and all of your people who are are working with you and everything that's going on you guys are fighting the good fight of faith we really appreciate it so thanks that's it for today's show my friends thanks for tuning in to cross defense we'll be back next week with more to equip 
sight and comfort, all from God's Word. Cross Defense is a production of KFUO Radio. Find past episodes and support Cross Defense at KFUO.org.